Good morning, friends. Today is the fifth Sunday in Lent, and I welcome you to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel lesson for this day comes from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The di disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, 
she came at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. The Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out. The dead man came out, hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you know anything about the Apostle Thomas, you probably remember that he was the one who, when the resurrected Jesus appeared to the disciples, he wanted proof that Jesus was really alive. He had to see Jesus wounded hands and reach out and touch the spot where the spear had pierced Jesus before he would believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. That's why we know him as Thomas, a nickname and a reputation that I believe he fully deserved. But that's another sermon. What I want to suggest to you today is that there's another adjective that we could use to describe Thomas other than doubting when we see him in this passage from John chapter 11. And that adjective is courageous. Though he only played a bit part, such a smart that you might be now thinking back and saying, I don't even remember that she mentioned Thomas. I did, it was very brief. Though he only plays a bit part, it is Thomas's example of courage that drew my attention this week in these days when we all face the dangers of COVID-19. Let's rewind to the beginning of the passage. Jesus had been ministering to the people from across the Jordan and his disciples were seeing a great number of people coming to faith. When Jesus heard that his beloved friend Lazarus was ill, in fact, had died, he told the disciples that they were going to go back to Bethany. This must have been frightening for the disciples since the Jewish leaders had been seeking to kill Jesus. And Bethany, being a suburb of Jerusalem, if you will, a lot closer to where all Jewish leaders would have been, seemed to the disciples both foolish and incredibly dangerous to go back to Judea, to walk into a trap that would likely have led to the death of Jesus as well as his disciples. But Jesus had great compassion 
for his friends, Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And he told the disciples that they had work to do and but while they could. And this is where Thomas gets his one great line. In response, Thomas says, let us also go that we may die with him. You see, Thomas, like the others, was convinced that Jesus was heading straight for a stoning. But if that was what Jesus was determined to do, then Thomas was determined to go there with him, even if it meant risking his own life to do so. Whatever might have plagued Thomas later on, in this moment, he showed great courage in following Jesus. My friends, in this moment of our history, we are also called, like Thomas, to courage. Jesus is calling us to courageous action right now, He's calling us to follow him without fear through this pandemic. But let me be absolutely clear. What that courageous action will look like will be different for every person who hears my voice. Jesus may be calling us to stay in our homes, leaving for any reason in order to protect our health so that we may care for family members and others who depend upon us. Staying at home is an act of courage and sacrifice because we all know how much we need one another to stay strong. Staying home requires courage. Jesus may be called to overcome our fear and report for work because we put a life of service in our community, healthcare workers, emergency personnel, grocery store employees, delivery services, mail carriers, and those who are providing spiritual and emotional care in these days. For those who have those types of jobs, going to work is an act of courage and sacrifice. Whether we are working from home or stuck at home unable to work, or venturing out while taking appropriate precautions, all of us need courage to follow Jesus in these days and not to give in to despair. And what is more, Jesus is calling us to provide whatever aid we can to our neighbors in whatever way that seems safe to us. For those of us who are homebound, it could mean reaching out by phone or a lot of other electronic means to provide comfort to one another. It could be sending good old fashioned cards, letters to lift people's spirits. It could mean making donations to organizations who are on the front lines of fighting this pandemic. For those of us who are able to leave our homes, providing our aid to our neighbors might mean we go to the grocery store to take care of our family's needs, perhaps picking up extra items for the food pantry, or shopping for a neighbor who cannot leave his home, or donating blood, or sewing masks for healthcare workers, or handing out food at a distribution site, or, and I heard this one on the news just yesterday, do you remember the concept of a victory garden? I heard that there's a movement afoot to begin planting victory gardens so that produce can be shared down the line as the economic danger we face might well outlast the viral danger. There are many more ways, I am sure. In fact, I watched a little segment of CNN while I was eating my breakfast this morning that talked about all of the things that people all across the country and in fact around the world are doing to support one another. There are many more ways the answer Jesus called to help our neighbors from wherever we are, sheltering or wherever we are cautiously and carefully interacting with one another. 
We just need to tap into a bit of Thomas's courage. And we can. We can respond courageously because we've got something that Thomas didn't have. We know the end of the story, not the end of the coronavirus story. None of us knows where the end of that will lead us. But we do know the end of life's story, and we know the end of Jesus' story. We know that Jesus' words of promise heard this morning, I am the resurrection and the life, we know that those words would be demonstrated as true for the whole world to see on Easter morning. And it's not just resurrection on the last day, as Martha supposed, nor is it just new life after we die. Jesus promises us resurrection life, new life, now. God offers us new wisdom and creativity for how to cope with the pandemic. God offers us renewed hope and will help us to learn new ways of offering life and health to others. God offers us of community, even though it is right now. God has the strength of faith. And in the end, God has promised us eternal life. So go out if Jesus is calling you to go out. Or stay in if Jesus is calling you to stay in. But wherever you are, be of good courage. We can be. Because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I received just a few prayer requests by email or phone this week, and I'd like to share them with you now. Please pray for the people of New York City. Please pray for families who need and who are receiving food from the weekly food distributions here at St. John's and also at the Redeemed Christian Church of God and through St. Elizabeth's School. A prayer of thanksgiving that Sheila's nephew, Chris G, never ended up getting sick. And so all of the fans at this point are in good health. Please pray for Stephanie B, the granddaughter of Bill and Liz D, who is doing her first year of residency in Chicago. And also please remember in prayer, Allison's coworker, whose daughter is pregnant with a high-risk pregnancy. And all the other concerns hold in your hearts. Let us now join together in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people. Holy God, we thank you for Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Join us with your gifts and promises. Keep this and be strong in faith and joy in love, so that we may follow your call to serve all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our You work through leaders at every Government. Open the ears of national, statewide, and local leaders to your wisdom and to the guidance of the scientific community. Guide presidents and prime ministers and legislatures, mayors and councils to the best decisions to protect their people. Lord, in your mercy, God. Protect all your children from the dangers of this pandemic. Help manufacturers and suppliers to get protective equipment to healthcare workers who are exposed to the coronavirus. Watch over workers who must put themselves at risk to provide for the public good. Inspire the work of researchers for cure and vaccines. In your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bountiful God, even in times of scarcity, we know that you provide what your children need. Bless the work of all agencies and individuals who are to make sure that everyone is. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your constant presence with us in these days of fear and uncertainty. Breathe your reassurance into every anxious heart and inspire us to be sources of comfort to those we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God and healing, hear our prayers for all who are at high risk for contracting COVID-19 and all who have already been infected. For all who have already lost or will lose their disease, and for all who are grieving. 
for all and fearful and for isolated and alone. For all who have lost income or employment and for those who struggle to support themselves and their families even in the best of times. For all who have other health concerns who must or postpone doctor's visits. For all who lack the technological resources to stay connected with family and friends. For all of us who grieve the loss of our way of life. For all whom we have named in this community of faith. And for all whom we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear these and all our prayers, spoken and silent, as well as the words of prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your, your will be done on earth in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Before we end this live cast, let me share some announcements. Please continue to spread the word and worship resources both this Sunday morning service and also our daily noon prayer videos. And if you know of people who have internet access or a smartphone, but aren't necessarily familiar with Facebook, please reach out to them and help them get connected so you can find our resources. Another reminder, if you would like to share prayer requests for next week's service, please either call the church office or email me by Saturday night. Next night is Palm Sunday. We will again live stream our worship at 9.30. And then from 10.30 until we will distribute palms to those who want them and feel com comfortable coming to get them. We ask that you stay in your cars and that you use our driveway sort of like a drive through entering the alley through the parking lot and then exiting onto Third Street. Peggy Doherty and I will be distributing palms with gloved hands through your car window. And I will offer a blessed car that comes through the line. If you've been following us on Facebook, you'll know that the Whitehall Hunger Initiative distributed supplemental resources to 86 children in seven senior households this week, about half of which were distributed in the same drive-through system that I just described that we'll use next Sunday with the Palms. Thanks to the community volunteers who are making this feeding ministry possible. If you know of hungry children or seniors or a household in Whitehall who is having difficulty, invite them to come to the church on Thursday between 11 and 12 and seven for food bag. Remember to drop off donations in the pantry or for this supplemental feeding effort. Um, you can drop off food uh, on the front porch of the church Monday through Friday from 9 to noon. Um, please call and let us know that you're dropping the food off so that we can pick it up, drop it in, and get it over to Fritz Hall. Finally, be gentle with one another. Give everyone the benefit of the doubt and by believing everyone is doing the best that they can. And be gentle yourselves. God sees that you are doing your best and that God also sees that you are struggling and that God will be with you through this time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The 
Lord's face shine on you and be great you. The Lord look upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Keep the faith. Thanks be to God.